In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome wall jump effect inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So before we jump into Adobe After Effects, we need to make sure that we've got the right footage. And in order to do this, we first just want to find a wall. Then we want to grab your phone or your camera, place it against the wall or put it on a tripod, put it on the ground, make sure it is static. Start rolling the camera and just hold for a moment. You just want to record a few seconds of empty footage this is the clean plate and we're going to need this to make you disappear from the shot. Then you want to run into the scene, complete your action and jump at the wall. Now essentially we're going to take that second, that jumping bit and make you disappear with that empty clean plate. So with those two shots now captured, jump into Adobe After Effects and let's begin editing. So as you can see, we're inside of Adobe After Effects and this is my clip. I'm walking up to the wall and jump that is where I'm going to disappear. So in order to do that, first of all, we're just gonna to go to the point where there's the most impact, so around there. We'll trim that clip to the end of the playhead, and then we'll just drag in our clean plate to take over from that point. So here we go, there's the clean plate, and that's it. Now, the problem is you can see there was a bit of a time difference between the jumping shot and the clean plate shot. So there's a little bit of difference in the clouds, which is gonna make things a little bit more difficult but I'm going to use some assets from Production Create later on to tidy up this effect and that should distract you from that jumping cloud effect. If you wanted to, you could mask the clouds from that jumping layer and add them into the clean plate or take the clean plate clouds and put them into the jumping layer if you wanted that smooth transition, but we're just gonna use the art of distraction to cover up that small mistake. So essentially this is the effect complete, but obviously we don't want to just leave it at that. We wanna take this further. So first of all, I'm just going to fade in this clean plate rather than just harsh cutting in. So I'll press T on the keyboard to load opacity, go a few frames in and create a brand new keyframe on 100. Then we'll go over and pull that down to zero. Now that's a little bit softer. But personally, I think the best way to transition is going to take this footage, roto just a few frames, and then we'll move the person through the wall. That's gonna be the best way to do this. So we're just gonna take that jumping layer. We're just going to roughly hover over here. We'll duplicate that footage. So Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V if you're on Windows. Then we'll just get rid of the footage up to the playhead on the copied layer. And then we'll just delete the end of it on the original. We'll move the copied layer onto the very top. And we're just going to roto over this area here. So we just want to roto maybe one, two, three, four, maybe four or five frames, just to the point where you start to drop back down again. That would do. So we're just going to go into the roto brush tool. So that is up here. Double click the footage, click the roto brush icon again to load the roto brush. And we're just going to zoom in. And as you can see, the brush at the moment is too thick. So we want to go to the brushes window, which is not loaded up here. So we need to go window brushes. And we're just going to pull the diameter down of that brush. And we're just going to paint within ourselves. So just paint this green paint inside the person. Don't worry if it's not 100% perfect. A lot's going to happen in this short space of time and there's going to be a lot of distraction in the foreground. So this doesn't need to be super clean. Then we'll just press space and we'll just let After Effects analyze that. And as you can see, it's done a pretty decent job. If you wanted to double check this, by the way, you can go down to here and select the toggle alpha overlay and everything red will disappear. Everything not red is going to stay. Now we'll just go back to the main composition window. So this is what we now have, but rather than just disappearing at this point, we want to disappear through the wall. So when this rotate layer starts, we're just gonna go into position, so press P. Then we'll move one frame over and we'll move the position of this rotate layer into the wall. And then we'll go again into the wall a bit more. There we go. So we should have disappeared through the wall at this point. As you can see, it looks very clunky at the moment. In order to fix that, we're just going to duplicate that wall layer, so the clean plate drag that one back on top. We'll reduce the opacity so we can see where the wall should be. This is where I should be making contact with the wall and then we're just gonna make a mask around that part of the wall. Pull the opacity back up to 100%. And there you go, that is us disappearing through the wall. Now, as you can see, very clunky at the moment, but this is where we've got Production Crate to lean into just to clean this effects up a little bit. So Production Crate is this really awesome website where you can download all of these amazing assets. Now, I've just searched for wall here. You can see we've got some really cool lightning sparks, super lightning wall with sparks, lightning wall with sparks. We can go into lightning or we could go into more of a 
portal. Sorry, I've got the cheapest, squeakiest chair possible. I am going to replace this because it's very noisy for filming, but you can hear a lot of wiggling on this chair. So yeah, you can see all of these amazing different portals. You've got some traditional portals. You've got these really cool purple portals. You've got blue portals. But I think I'm going to keep it simple and just go for something electric inspired. So I'm just going to download a few of these assets. Oh, there's also some dust hits. I think that could be quite cool. Maybe as we go through the impact of the wall, create some dust hits. And that looks great. So I'm just going to go into my downloads. I'm going to throw all of those assets into Adobe After Effects. We'll just throw them all on the timeline for now, and then we'll just go through and solo them all when we are ready. So this is the impact. This is when the spark should start to appear. So we'll line them all up with that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hide everything except for the top layer. But I am going to change the blending mode of all of these to screen because at the moment they're all really dark. They've got this black background. So to get rid of that, we'll go toggle switches slash mode and we'll change this to either screen, lighten or add. Let's start with add. And to be honest, I'm just going to lock all of the other layers. We'll just lock them. Start with the top layer. I'm just going to drag this across to the point where this kicks off. As you can see, there's the sparks. So I'm just going to line that up with the point where I jump through. Although I would argue it's a bit too big. So we're just going to pull the scale of that down, but we'll just lock that and go to the next layer. So we've got some cool electric hits. As you can see, that should be going up the wall. So we're just going to decrease the size of that. And then I'm just going to convert that to a 3D layer. And we'll rotate this around so that this now lies flush with the wall. So we'll just rotate this around. And then when we play this back, See, that looks pretty cool. Then we'll go to the next layer. We'll turn this layer on. We'll lock the previous layer. And as you can see, asset by asset, I'm just building this up to the point where we're creating something really awesome. So there you go, it's pretty cool. But at the moment, there's no real interaction with the space. We've got this cool lightning effect happening. But the problem is there's no interaction with the space. If there was lightning, the whole space would light up. So that's what we need to go ahead and add. You can see we've got this really cool blue lightning appear. So we'll go to layer, new adjustment layer. We'll go to the point where the initial spark hits, which was here. Go into effects and presets and search for levels with individual colors. Then we'll just go ahead and increase the RGB input white to a brighter number. And then we'll go ahead and add some blue as well. So increase the blue input white to make it a bit more blue. Then we'll press T to load opacity, create a brand new keyframe at 100%. We'll go two frames back and go zero. In fact, now we'll go one frame back and then we'll go a few frames after that 100% and pull it back down to 100. And we've got this flash. But lightning wouldn't work like that. If there was lightning and you recorded it with your camera, because of how cameras work with interlacing, you would see the first half, the top strip, and then the bottom strip. So we need to do the same thing. So let's create a mask around the top half of this footage, of this adjustment layer. Then we'll go ahead and copy that adjustment layer, shift it two frames to the right, or you could go one. Then we'll go into that mask, and we just want to invert that mask. So if we now play this back, you'll see we get light at the top and then light at the bottom. And then of course, we're just gonna add one more adjustment layer without the mask, just to blend those two a little bit more. And we'll pull that one frame to the left. So it's in between both of those. And of course, as well, it wouldn't just disappear straight away. There would be a little bit of glow on the fence and the door. So I'm just going to copy that one more time. But this time, rather than just that initial impact and then disappearing, I'm going to pull this number up to 50. Then we'll go a few frames across. We'll go up to 80. A few across, then we'll go down to 40. Then back up to 50. And then we're just going to slowly teeter off down to zero and with that mask selected we got to go up to the pencil and we'll draw a mask around the fence so this is the fence directly opposite the explosion 
And we'll go into masks and we'll increase the mask feather so that this is now blended a bit more. And let's see how this looks in action. You can see we've got that interaction there with the fence. And of course, we need the same thing on the actual lightning itself on the wall. So we'll just go ahead and draw another mask on that adjustment layer, but this time on that wall where the impact is taking place. Again, we're just going to pull the feather down on that layer just to blend it with the footage a bit more. You might think this looks too overexposed, but realistically, if you were filming this, you couldn't get that lightning perfectly exposed. It would be either overexposed or the rest of the footage would be underexposed. You wouldn't get both exposed. So that is realistically how that would look to the camera. Now this looks really cool and all we've done is just stack a few assets on top of each other, adjusted the levels, and that looks really cool. Now, the one thing that I love to do, which really ties everything together, is just add a little bit of fake camera shake. Now, fake camera shake can go a long way. It can really accentuate that impact. So in order to do that, we're just gonna grab everything, highlight everything, and select pre-compose. Although, before I pre-compose, I've noticed we've got some locked layers. So we're just going to unlock everything which should be unlocked. So nothing should be padlocked here. We want everything to be affected. Pre-compose into one layer. So this is all now conveniently in one layer. There you go, looks really cool. Now we want to go into position. We're gonna hold Option on the keyboard. I believe it is Alt on Windows, but Option on Mac. Select the stopwatch icon on position, and this loads up the expression window. And in here, we're gonna type wiggle, open brackets, two comma 10. And let's see how that looks. It does look a little bit stiff, so we're just gonna add a little bit more on the first option. Bit too much. Let's go wiggle four. There you go, that feels a bit more like somebody was holding a phone and there's that little bit of flash. However, at this moment in time, you can see there should be a lot more impact. If this was happening in front of you, you would pull the camera back a little bit. So rather than just the normal handheld shake. So we're just going to go into that pre-comp, go to the point of impact and go transform, create brand new keyframe on position, scale and rotation. We'll go two or three keyframes back and we'll create another set and then three or four after the fact. Then we'll go to that impact, we'll increase the scale to around 106, 107. We'll adjust the position, we'll add some rotation. And then we'll go between the first and second. We'll pull the rotation the other way, pull the position the other way. Then we'll go one after, rotate the opposite way, pull the position in a different direction. And then we end up with something like this, which is a bit aggressive. So we're just going to give each keyframe a little bit more wiggle room, a little bit more breathing room. And then we end up with that, which again is a bit dramatic. So we're just going to let the last set of keyframes breathe a little bit more. I feel like it's the position causing the problem here. So we're just going to delete that keyframe and let that settle back into position. And that's looking really good. Although now we've got the problem of these black edges. So we'll go into effects and preset and search for motion tile. Drop that onto the pre-comp, change the output width to 300, output height to 300, mirror edges, and of course, because we've added all of this motion, we want to tie this in together with some motion blur. So we'll just select a motion blur icon, make sure motion blur is enabled. And then when we render this out, you can see we've got this really cool effect. The motion blur is just tying everything together. I'm just going to shift these keyframes over to the right a little bit because at the moment that movement feels a little bit preempted. It's a bit early. The movement would happen on impact, not just before. So there you go. Once we render this out and we play this back, you can see we've created this really awesome effect from just a few really simple shots, some assets downloaded from production crates and just some simple effects added on top, some lighting effects and some camera position effects. And then of course, enabling that motion blur just to tie everything in together. 10 minutes ago, this effect looked really bad and I wouldn't have blamed you for skipping away. But with all of this added together, this effect now looks really cool. So with all of that said and done, thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.